What's going on, everyone? So, Nikola Vucevic, as well as Zach Levine, are both balling out this year, plus... Both are available via trade. Chicago supposedly really wants to get off of both of their contracts. Both guys have multiple years left on their deal. And it just so happens that the Lakers could really use a center and really use just a bucket getter guard. If you added Nikola Vucevic and Zach Levine to the Lakers, good luck, right? I mean, a starting five of like, say, Austin Reeves, Zach Levine, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Nikola Vucevic, like, it's tough, right? Like, defensively, I definitely have my concerns. Defensively, you're probably not super great, but offensively, probably the best of the league at that point. Um, with just the versatility, especially the way Anthony Davis is shooting the three ball this year, uh, he could easily slide on the floor. Also, would LeBron be willing to, to slide over and play the three more? That's something you have to keep in mind. And then also, Austin Reeves and Zach Levine can both initiate. Plus, if you ever needed to at any point, LeBron could just default into point guard mold and just kind of make plays. I mean, imagine like the pick and roll, pick and pop actions with Anthony Davis and Vu, and you can scatter those two guys' minutes, right? Like, and you'd still have like Dalton Connect. Like, the beauty is with the Chicago move is you don't have to sell the farm. You don't have to give all your assets. You just have to essentially match salaries to get off of those guys because they just really want to get off of them. And there's not a huge market for either guy, right? Because one, in Zach Levine, how many teams need a Zach Levine for one? Most teams already have a guy, a guard that can be that bucket getter, be that isolation guy, be that scorer. And all the bad teams, he's not going to want to go to. And all the mid-tier teams, they all have a guy that they're trying to grow and develop, right? Like they're all trying to get that guy, right? Like... Rather than like, oh, hey, let's go trade for a guy. And then you add in his salary and you add in his injury history and you add in all those things. It's like there's very few teams that are willing to do that. Oh, and by the way, the new CBA makes things like literally impossible. And then a guy like Nikola Vucevic, again, like how many teams need a starting center? Most teams already have a starting center. I mean, even the Lakers, you could argue, don't really need a starting center. They need a backup center. But if you're going to go get Vu and his 20 million, you're almost better off starting him at that point rather than him coming off the bench but here's where the dilemma lies lakers would have to send out like half their roster not really but they'd have to send out like six seven guys right because looking at zach levine he's making 43 and some change let's call it 44 million because remember lakers have to send out more salary than they take back vucevic is right at 20 million 20 million on the dot so you're talking, you have to send out essentially 64 million just to match the salaries, just to get the salaries to get those two guys. You also have to round out the rest of a roster. That is where the issue lies. It's not so much getting those two, because I do think that you could get both of them if you wanted to. It's how do you fill out the rest of your roster, right? Because if you have to send out eight guys to bring back two, well, you still need to fill out four rush spots. If you don't have any money, well, then guess what? Now you're stuck, right? They're not trading Austin Reeves. Obviously not trading LeBron James and Anthony Davis, right? They're not trading Dalton Connect. So you have at least those four guys that are as close to untouchable as possible in that deal. Outside of that, I think everyone else is probably on the table. So how do you make that trade work? How do you work this out? Again, you have to send out more than... 64 million. That's where the dilemma lies. So D'Angelo Russell and Rui Hachimura get you to 35.6 million if you want to be exact, but let's not really count the 0.6 because you need as much extra salary going out as possible, right? So 35 million between Rui and D'Lo, right? Okay, well, now you're halfway there. So it's like, okay, cool. That's where the problem lies, though, is getting the other half. So you could trade Gabe Vincent, there's 11 million. So now you're at uh, 46 million. There's Zach Levine's money, right? And the roster spot that you need to fill because you're sending out three for one and you have to have at least 14 guys. So, okay, so now you're at 40, like I said, you're at 46 million. Well, now you have to get to Vu. Okay, how do you do that? Well, you just traded Gabe, Rui, and DeAndre Russell. Well, now you're looking at like Jared Vanderbilt, and his 10 million, right? And then, oh, you'd have to send out Max Christie. So there's 18 million. And then you're probably doing Jalen Hood Shafino, which is 3.3 million. And that gets you to what? Like 60, basically $68 million. Okay. So you sent out six guys and you're bringing in two, right? So you have 11 guys on roster. You have to get, you have to fill three roster spots. And you have basically $4 million to do so. 
that's where the problem lies. So essentially, you're like you're bringing in like all your two way guys, really, right? You're bringing in Coloco. You're bringing in because Coloco's uh, vet minimum would be like twelve million or one. Sorry, not twelve million. One point two. You're looking at uh, uh, Armel Traore is probably one point two, and then um, same thing with Quincy Olivari is probably one point two. It's probably what you're looking at. So now you could argue at that point, who cares, right? Because you have Austin Reeves, Zach Levine, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Nikola Vucevic. Then you have like Quincy Olivari. Um, I mean, you'd still have Christian Wood, right? We have Dalton Connect. So you'd have like Quincy, let's say Connect. Or you could do like, well, Jordan Goodwin's. I'd have to check on Jordan Goodwin and his, but... If his is like, you know, only like one and a half, right? 1.2, 1. 1. 1.5, something like that. Then you might be able to get him on board. But like, let's just say it's just like the, the G League guys, right? So you're looking at, like I said, looking at like Quincy, Connect, um, Cam Reddish, uh, Christian Wood, and then Jackson Hayes and Coloco or Coloco, right? Could you maybe throw in like a Jackson Hayes to bring in a... a you know, another guy, sure. But that's kind of where you're at. Now, is that worth kind of... Like, is that roster good enough to win a championship is the question. Right? Like, on paper, I think it is. But defensively, you're probably pretty bad. Right? Like, your best defensive player outside of Anthony Davis in that starting unit is Zach Levine. Right? And... Then, like, LeBron, when he's locked in and engaged, can still get you a stop on a possession. Right? Like, that's that's really where the dilemma lies. But it's just like, man, you'd have Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, right, on top of Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Austin Reeves, and then you still have Dalton Connect off the bench. You get to finally see what Quincy Olivari gives you. Um, you still, you know, you still have Christian Wood. You still have Cam Reddish. At any point, you could, if you ever needed to, you could just bring Vu off the bench. Like if things, it's like, man, we really need some defense in the starting unit, right? Like you could go with Cam Reddish or, uh, and and in the starting unit, and then just like bring Vu off the bench or whatever. I mean, if I'm being honest, I'd probably bring Austin Reeves off the bench, right? And have like Levine and Cam Reddish as like your one and two, because you just need an initiator. LeBron can be your point guard, right? So you could just have like. Levine with Cam Reddish and then LeBron, AD, and Vu, right? I think that'd be a nice five. And then you have, like, Austin Reeves. So now you don't have as much pressure on Quincy Olivari. So you go, like, Reeves, Olivari, uh, Connect, Reddish, and then um, Hayes or, um, or sorry, Wood, not Reddish, Wood. Um, and then you have, like, Coloco and Hayes to be kind of your backup centers. Like, I think that would be a good approach. Um question is is that better than say like you know like a bruce brown cam johnson and a like a walker kessler right like is that does that be better but like i said you probably still have all your picks right you probably still have all your assets right because like one you're not trading a pick for levine and vu's probably not yielding a first from anybody either so like maybe you're doing like a pick swap in a couple seconds or something Right? Like, is that something that you're doing? You know, maybe you're finding a third team to kind of take on some guys, right? Like, kind of, you know, musical chairs the thing. Like, okay, well, you know, because if, if you're Chicago, you don't want to take on, like, seven guys. Right? So you have a couple teams that are like, hey, you know, we'll throw in a second for, you know, send us Jalen and Jafino, and we'll just, like, give you a second or something like that. Right? Like, team might do that. Right? So maybe you're adding a third team into the mix, into the deal, so that way Chicago's not taking on, like, 15 players. Like, that could be okay. Um, I don't know. It'd be hard to say no. Like, if you get, especially if, like, you didn't have to give up a first, right? Like, if Chicago was like, hey, like, we just want to get off of them, essentially, right? Their long term money, like, and you don't have to give up a first. I, I don't hate that idea. It'd be kind of hard to be like, nah, like, we're good, hard pass, right? Like, it's just like, because again, like, on paper, Austin Reeves, Zach Levine, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Nikola Vucevic is probably one of, if not the best starting fives in the league, I definitely think it's comparable to Chicago or, uh, to Boston at that point, right? Like maybe you're not as well balanced on both sides of the basketball, but you know, like Zach Levine and like, and Vu compared to like Porzingis, right? And guys like, 
I just I think the Lakers would have the two best players on the court at all times in LeBron and AD. And then you can make an argument that the Lakers might have the third best guy on the court at all times. Right? Like and then go down the pecking order, right? Like I said Chicago's be- or uh Chicago, uh Boston's better balanced on both sides, right? Cuz Drew Holiday's just a better two-way player, Derek White, two-way player, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, right? Like they they be they're just better two ways. But I think you're better offensively. Right? Like Zach Levine is better offensively than everybody on that team not named Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and I think just natural offense Right, like just natural bucket getter. I think you can make an argument for Jalen Brown, right? Like Zach Levine over Jalen Brown. Just I, I would take Jalen Brown over Zach Levine because he's just a better two way guy. But like just like hey, bucket getter, like go get me fifty tonight. Like I think Zach Levine is. You can make an argument for it be better, and then you know, again you have like Vu. I think Vu and Chris Stapps. You can make an argument, kind of wash each other out, especially the way Vu's been playing this year and shooting the basketball. I don't know. I don't hate it. But it's just I, I I've get I've gotten asked this a lot, you know, is it possible to get both? And it's like yeah. And I've talked about how y- you can't, right? But I was like, okay, well, why don't we do the inverse of that? Let's talk about how we can. How can you get both and still make the team work and still work it out? And that's how it would have to be. You'd have to essentially send out, like I said, D'Lo, Rui, Gabe Vincent, um, J- Jared Vanderbilt, um, Max Christie, and Jalen Hutchfino. Like I said, you could throw in a Jackson Hayes or whatever if you wanted to bring in somebody else. But you're basically sending out six guys for two, um, and then you need to fill out the rest of the roster. But like I said, you have essentially $68 million going out, and you have 64 coming in. It's actually less than $64. Um, but it's also like 100000 less than uh, 68 So it kind of washes out. So basically you'd have like $4 million to work with, um, you know, four and some change to work with, which – Again, at that point, you have to bring in essentially your G League guys. You're bringing in G League guys just to, to fill out and round out the roster. But you got like seven, you got your seven, eight guys, right? Like you, you're in good shape. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are you kind of mixed in the middle? Do you think like, no, don't get both of them. Just get one of them. Do you think, no, you have to get both of them. How do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are. I love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.